A reading from the second book of Samuel. In those days, all the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and said, Here we are, your bone and your flesh. In past days, when Saul was our king, it was you who led the Israelites out and brought them back. And the Lord said to you, You shall shepherd my people Israel and shall be commander of Israel. When all the elders of Israel came to David in Hebron, King David made an agreement with them before the Lord, and they anointed him king of Israel. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, let us give thanks to the Father who has made you fit to share in the inheritance of the Holy Ones in light. He delivered us from the power of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him were created all things in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he himself might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile all things for him, making peace by the blood of his cross, through him whether those on earth or those in heaven. The word of the Lord. The rulers sneered at Jesus and said, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the chosen one the Christ of God. Even the soldiers jeered at him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Above him there was an inscription that read, This is the king of the Jews. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuking him, said in reply, Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed, we have been condemned justly. For the sentence we receive corresponds to our crimes. But this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. What does it mean to be king? Most of us like the idea of being king or queen. We think that sounds kind of nice. I, I, would, I would like to be the ruler. We tell daughters all the time, you're a little princess, kind of setting the aim that someday she's going to meet her prince and become a queen. We set this aim of ruling over things. When people are in business, they like working their way up the ladder. Why? Because they feel a little closer to being the king of the kingdom. They like when they get their own place that they're manager over, or maybe when they become pastor of their own parish. Yes, priests do have egos. We all desire this control and leadership and this opportunity to make a change and a difference, to be king, to rule as we would rule. But it's really interesting to look at what it is 
for Christ to be the king. Of all the different passages that Christ speaks of his kingdom, what passage does the church put in front of us to talk about Christ as king? Christ on the cross. Christ dying on the cross is where the church directs us to see this is what it is for Christ to be king. To hang on the cross next to two criminals. Not sure about you, but that's not exactly what I was looking forward to. But this is the type of king we have with Christ as king of the universe. One who looks out at us and says, I am your king to serve you. I am your king to serve you. Not the same view of kingship that many people would look for. Our king came not to rule over us, though that is his proper place, but to serve us. Why? Because he knew we had a debt that we could not pay. We had a debt that we owed because of sin that we could not pay for ourselves. And what can a king do when their subjects owe a debt they can't pay? king can toss them in prison. A king can say that that debt is forgiven and just wipe it clean. Or a king can say, I will pay the price. I will pay that subject's debt. And that's the king we have. The king who says, I know what you owe me and I will pay it for you. Why? So he could speak love more powerfully. We hear elsewhere in scripture, there's no greater love than this to lay down your life for your friends. There is no greater love than, than this, that the king would lay down his life for his subjects. Look at that cross with Christ hanging on it. Hear him looking out at you saying, I love you. I will pay the debt for you. There is no sin greater than my love. This gospel passage tells us about the inscription above the cross, the INRI. When you see the INRI, we vaguely know that it means Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. In Latin, Jesus Nazaranus Rex Eduorum, you already knew that. But one of the things I love looking at that INRI and just hearing in English is the words, I never regretted it. To look at Christ on the cross, the king of the universe, saying to you, I never regretted it. To have him saying out to you, I never regretted creating this fallen world, knowing that it would fall. Him looking out at you saying, I never regretted creating you because I love you still. And every time we falter, every time we fail, every time we sin, having him say once again to us, I never regretted it. I never regretted you being a part of this world. I never regretted it. I never regretted dying on this cross for you because you are worth it to me. The king of the universe is saying that about you particularly. You with all your sins, me with all my sins, which are probably worse than yours. I'm just better at sinning. I never regretted it, he says to you. The king of all the universe says, I never regretted adopting you as my own at baptism, taking you as my son, my daughter, whom I deeply love. I never regretted it. 
This is your king. What does it mean to be his subject? What does it mean to follow a king who leads like that? How would our lives be different if we really let him rule? How would our lives be different if we let that kind of love be what motivates us and how we deal with other people? How would our lives, how would our world, how would our community be different if we looked out with love to each person God places in our lives, saying, I know the king never regretted loving me. May I love like him, loving without regret.